Is making a better brisket as simple as adding a few additional hours to your cooking time? I never thought an 11 hour brisket cook versus a 15 hour brisket cook would make much of a difference, but this experiment has me second guessing myself. Will this make me change the way I cook briskets forever? We're gonna find out in this video, so let's get smoking. Steve Gow here, and I've been thinking a lot about what prevents a brisket from getting a dry flat. I've always had this theory that the way to get a juicy brisket and prevent getting a dry flat is to have the brisket cook evenly. So that means the flat and the point are cooking at roughly the same temperature and the flat isn't running away too high in temperature from the point. I've always found sort of anecdotally, I've never tested this, that if I really overcook the flat at the beginning of my cook and get it up to let's say 170 degrees Fahrenheit, but the point is still at around like 130, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, then it doesn't matter what I do for the rest of the cook, the flat is dead. The flat is like beef jerky, it's never coming back, and there's nothing I can do to rehydrate it. But it's weird because we're taking our briskets up to 190, 200 degrees Fahrenheit in a lot of cases, and we all do that near the end of the cook, and the flats don't always turn out dry. So it couldn't just be temperature alone, it has to be something else, and my theory is that it's that uneven cooking. For some reason, if we get that uneven temperature in the flat as compared to the point during the early part of the cook, something happens to the flat and it just turns out dry. And this theory has a little bit of backup. In Aaron Franklin's books, he talks a lot about cooking briskets evenly, tempering them on the counter for a few hours so they cook more evenly when they go on the smoker, spritzing the ends of the brisket so they cool down and the middle catches up with the ends and they cook more evenly, having even temperatures in the cook chamber and good airflow. He doesn't ever explicitly say in his books or anywhere that I've seen on the internet that yes, even cooking is the way that you prevent a dry flat and get a juicy brisket, but I think that's kind of implied because why would we be doing any technique at all if the result was not a juicier and better brisket in some way, right? So I think it's implied. He also doesn't explain why, which is what I'm really more interested in than anything else. It's one thing to say, okay, do this and you'll get this result, but it's another thing to say, here is the actual scientific reason that this actually happens. Because if it's true that even cooking results in a better brisket, then that still begs the question, why does that happen? Is it because a lower temperature in the cook chamber during the first part of the cook has a higher humidity, a lower surface temperature, so we're drying out the meat less and drying out the flat less in the first portion of the cook? Is it because cooking the meat more evenly helps the moisture redistribute more effectively or something like that? I have absolutely no idea and I'm not afraid to say that because I don't think anyone knows. And there's a crowd of really smart people that are excellent at barbecue and they swear that hot and fast cooking is the way to go, but that is by definition the way to cook a brisket unevenly. So why aren't the hot and fast people getting dry briskets all the time? Is there something else going on that isn't explained by just uneven cooking? Anyway, I'm not gonna be able to definitively answer that question in this one experiment, but what I can do is I can try to cook a brisket more evenly and see if I get better results. And the best way to do that is, in my mind, to cook at a lower temperature. If we cook at a lower temperature, the meat is going to cook more evenly. So in this experiment, I'm going to cook one brisket at 200 to 225 degrees for the first four hours. I'm tacking on that extra four hours onto my regular brisket cook at the very beginning to see if it makes a difference. And then I'm going to cook that brisket like I normally do. I'm going to bump it up to 250 to 275 until it hits the stall. I'm going to foil boat it, and then I'm going to continue to cook it at around 300 to 315 degrees to really render that fat cap. Finish the brisket up to around 195 degrees and then I'm gonna wrap it and hold it. So I'm starting out with two choice grade briskets from Costco. I'm slathering them with a bit of soy sauce. I'm using Golden Mountain seasoning, which is basically soy sauce. I'm slathering that on and then I'm applying some rub. I'm just using some basic 50-50 kosher salt and coarse grain pepper, 16 mesh black pepper. After it has a nice coat, I'm giving it a second coat of this Southern Dutch barbecue season it all. This took second place in the American Royal Rub competition, so I was really interested to test it out. And I actually had to reach out to Southern Dutch Barbecue because I couldn't find where to purchase their rub. And the reason is because they're located in the Netherlands. So I reached out to them and they were nice enough to send me some of their rub to try. And it's really good, guys. I'll link it in the description section below. Maybe you can email them as well and you can see if they'll ship you some. Then I'm flipping the briskets over. I'm applying some more soy sauce and just slathering it on. And then I'm applying the same 
rub to the top. And then I'm gonna let those briskets sit out for about 30 minutes to soak up the rub. And after 30 minutes, I'm opening up my Old Country Pits Gen 2 offset smoker. Old Country Pits was nice enough to send me one of these to do a review. I've been using it in a few videos and I'll probably do a review video in January. I put the brisket on the smoker at around 200 to 225 degrees Fahrenheit, so really low in temperature, and I'm gonna let it smoke away for the first four hours of this cook. After four hours, I'm opening up the smoker and checking on the brisket. It doesn't look like it's changed that much. I can tell it's darkened up a little bit, but it definitely hasn't started sweating out much moisture yet. I'm temping it with my Chef's Temp Final Touch X10, which is a great thermometer. I'll link it in the description section below. It has this really handy hold feature where you can just plug it into the brisket and then click the hold button, and then I can pull it out and I can just hold that temperature and clearly see what the temperature is. It's reading 110 degrees Fahrenheit after four hours, so it's got a ways to go. And it kind of makes me think whether this extra four hours did anything at all besides making me wait a really long time to cook a brisket because it's only at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not sweating out any moisture. It doesn't look particularly darker like it's absorbed more smoke or anything, but maybe this will help it cook more evenly. I don't know. At this point, I'm also putting the control brisket on. So this represents the type of brisket that I would cook in my normal 11 hour brisket cooks because now I'm going to bump up the temperatures to around 250 to 275 degrees Fahrenheit, which is normally the temperature that I start my briskets at. And I'm just going to let that smoke away. I'm going to enjoy this Old Country Pits offset smoker. It's pretty cool. I'm liking it so far. It's got a nice insulated firebox. It looks pretty sleek. It's uh, really thick metal, so it retains temperatures really well. But I feel like I need to use it a few more times before I get a good opinion of it. Now, every hour or so, I'm opening up the smoker and I'm spritzing any dry spots. Where I live in Calgary, Alberta, it's really dry. So my briskets are always bone dry whenever I look at them during the first part of the cook before they start sweating out any moisture. So I'm always spritzing my briskets and especially spritzing the flat in an attempt to lower it in temperature and help it cook more evenly with the rest of the brisket. But mainly I'm just trying to keep the briskets moist so that they continue to soak up that smoke. And after around eight hours, so eight hours for the control brisket, the regular brisket, and 12 hours for the low and slow brisket, the low and slow brisket is temping at around 172 to 180, depending on where I probe. And the regular brisket that's only been on for six hours is temping at around 160 to 165, 170 in some places. So the regular brisket caught up quite quickly to the low and slow brisket, but the low and slow one still has the lead in terms of temperatures. So that's a good sign. It's showing me that that extra four hours of smoking actually did something. Now that the briskets are in the stall, they've sweated out some of their moisture. I'm foil boating both of them just to help them cook more evenly. I'm putting them back in the smoker and then I'm going to continue to smoke them until they hit about 195 internal. Now for the low and slow brisket, that happened about an hour earlier than I expected. It was about 14 hours into the cook and it was really tender. It was probing around 195 in most areas, at least 195. It was probing 200 in the thickest part of the point that was closest to the firebox, which is okay. The point can take a lot of heat. Most importantly, the flat was feeling tender and it was around 195 to 197. So I removed that brisket from the smoker. I put it down on some foil with tallow and clarified butter and a bit of soy sauce, and then I wrapped it up tightly and I put it in my holding oven at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna hold it for 18 hours until the taste test the next day. Moving back out to the regular brisket, this brisket is about 12 hours in now and it's probing at around 195 to 200. It's still a little bit tougher than the low and slow brisket, even though they're kind of temping at exactly the same temperature. So it's making me wonder if that low and slow period at the very beginning of the cook actually did something to tenderize that brisket better, even though they're both temping at the same temperature right now. Now I could have kept going until this brisket got as tender as the low and slow brisket before I took it off, but it was getting way too late. I had to pull this thing. And that kind of begs the question, if I waited an extra hour or an hour and a half and got this control brisket a little bit more tender, would that change the results we're gonna get in the taste test? But adding an extra hour and a half would have turned this cook into a 13, maybe 14 hour cook. And then we'd be getting close to the same amount of time that we cooked the low and slow brisket. So it wouldn't be that much of a comparison. So I removed this brisket from the smoker. I wrapped 
wrapped it in tallow, clarified butter, and soy sauce, and then I held it alongside the other brisket for the next 15 hours. All right, guys, it's the next day, and I'm here with my buddy Joe. Joe, say hello to all of the, I'll call you guys smoke trailers. That's the term my dad came up with. Hi, smoke trailers. Hi, <laughs> hi. That's a good name. It's terrible. It's terrible. Smoke trailers. It sounds like it's a trailer with a smoker on it or something. I was thinking maybe a defective trailer. Yeah, yeah. It sounds, it sounds terrible. Anyway, we'll work on it. All right, I've got both briskets here. I'm not going to tell Joe which one is which. Joe, basically the concept of this video is that I've cooked a brisket lower and slower and I've cooked one of them hotter and faster and we're going to see which one we prefer. So right. just give your honest opinion and let me know what you think of each brisket. So let's can do that. Cut into this guy. I'm just going to cut right down the middle. Ooh. Slicing like a dream. And I'll give you guys a look. Look at that guys. That is so dang juicy. That is crazy. Look at that, Joe. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Succulent. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm just going to cover this in tallow. I'll put the flat to the side and we'll get a slice of the point. This is a really long brisket. Uh, so the point is really long. So I'm just going to put this to the side. It smells good. It does smell good. It smells delicious. All right, I'm just going to slice off this chunk for burnt ends. We'll chunk that up later. And then I'll do a couple of slices here. We'll do this one here. We'll do the fourth slice in. The fourth slice is supposed to be the best one. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but... I'll take your word for it. It is pretty good. It's like the geographic center of the point. So I'll just uh, cut this one and I'll give you a slice. You don't have to eat the whole thing. <laughs> I, I, I might. Because there, there's going to be some more bites that we're going to eat here, but Kay. let's give it a taste. And then I'm not going to make any facial expression or anything. I'm going to let you give your honest opinion. Okay. Kay. Cheers. Cheers. My goodness. <laughs> I got my poker face on. Yeah, this is my poker face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is very good. Well, as someone who knows nothing about brisket, but I enjoy tasty uh, barbecue and meat. Uh, this one, I would say I, I do taste a bit of smokiness on yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, all, I think that it's nice and um, fatty. Mm -hmm. It's uh, got a really tender texture. Yeah. Breaks apart nicely, chews really easily. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah, it does. I mean, if you pull it apart, it, it pulls apart pretty easily. It does. Yeah. And very easy on the on the old gums and teeth. Yeah. But um, I'm really enjoying this. I don't have a frame of reference, so maybe I can come back to you on this one after you've taken a there's bite a, of the other one. There's an old saying in barbecue, you don't need teeth to eat my beef. <laughs> <laughs> True here. If it's done, if it's done right. What do you call this? The crusty part? That is called the bark. Yeah. Loving that. Have you tried brisket before? I have, but nothing that was made with this much love and care. Oh, okay. I don't think. Okay. Yeah. I put a lot of love into my briskets. Clearly. Yeah. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah. Any other kind of um, thoughts? You mentioned sweet. Uh, I, I'm not picking up much sweetness, but my palate probably isn't developed for that. Okay. Uh, so how about I circle back on this one after I've had a taste of the other one? Yeah. Then I've got a frame of reference. Very corporate-y. Let's uh, circle back yeah. and synergize oh, later. Oh, on. yeah, I'll synergize. <laughs> and uh, I have an action item that we can take back. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Man. This is all the stuff that and, I, got, I cut out of the video. And you did this? Did I cook this? It was insane. Well, yeah, I cooked this. I mean... Who else would have cooked it? <laughs> I don't know, Jacob? I don't know. Ja you got, yeah. you got him trained My up? My son. Yeah. He should be ready to cook already. Mm -hmm. Take over from you. Okay, so I'm going to take a slice of the flat now, and I'll give you this. This is a slice of the flat. So typically it's like the leaner part of a brisket. Okay. That's what the flat is. Okay. But it's got some of the point still on top of it. So like the bottom is the flat, and this is some of the point More on point. top of it. So this will be new to you. New so, to me. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Oh, wow. Immediately different. Yeah, it's going to be leaner. Yeah, but even the taste, it hit me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like very uh, uh, palate forward. I taste the smokiness on it. Mm -hmm. Uncouth, th though this may sound, it's almost like I'm having roast beef. Um, that's the effect, like the, the texture and also uh, the, the flavor yeah. itself. Like you said, more of the So beef like when you beefy. say roast beef, like do you mean In a good prime way. rib or roast beef? Because there's a difference. Roast beef yeah. is like that overcooked pot no. roasty taste and prime rib is like... I would medium say rare type. Excellent, excellent uh, prime rib. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought you meant. <laughs> that is what I meant. <laughs> Smoke trailers. Yeah, I'm not trying to lead you or anything. No, but no, this is the kind of thing that I would look forward to having on a Sunday. Yeah. Uh, afternoon. Right, but you know, like you've had pot roast before. That's like made in a slow cooker or something, and it's like really crumbly and fall apart, and it's got that. It's kind of like drained of flavor. 
Yeah. It's like beefy, but it's like, or like beef and barley soup, where it's like the beef is there, but it's just texture. It's like no flavor, right? That's right. Yeah, I've, I've had, unfortunately, those experiences. Yeah. This is not that. Okay. Okay. We're all on the same page then. And then we'll move on to this one. And then I'm just going to slice down this one. And I'll give you guys a look. Look at that. Super juicy. What do you think of that? Very juicy. Does it look any different than the last one? Uh, the, is the coloration a little bit lighter? Am I wrong? I don't know, but it's still very juicy, that's for sure. It might be a little bit lighter, yeah. So I'm just covering it in tallow. This prevents it from oxidizing. Uh, if you don't cover it in tallow, then it'll kind of dry out on the surface. Oh. So it's kind of like covering cheese in like wax. Right. So that it doesn't dry out okay. <laughs> and oxidize. Okay, I'm going to slice off the burnt ends here. And again, I'm going to make these slices a little bit thicker. One two, three, four. The magic four. The magic, the magic number. Magic number. Okay, that's the exact same slice that you got. What? As the, as the other brisket. So try that one out, and okay. I'll try this one out. Right off the bat, it feels like it's more tender. It's like falling apart. Look at this thing. Yeah. So if I pull this apart, yeah, I agree. It looks a little bit more tender. Yeah. A lot more tender, actually. Quite a bit, yes. Okay, I don't even know how to eat this thing. Mm. I think this one does it for me. Juicy is all get out. Yeah. Like can barely contain the juiciness. Mm -hmm. So what your thoughts on this? Like obviously more tender. Is it juicier? Mm -hmm. Is it like, what's the mouth feel like compared to the last one? Well, I don't feel like I even need to chew it. I feel like my, I can basically break it down just with my tongue on the roof of my mouth. Yeah. It's just like super fall apart. Yeah. Very, very, very fall apart. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of flavor, like once mm -hmm. you get past all, everything else, like is it smokier than the last one? Um, to, like compared to the last one, the, the flavor that you tasted? Yeah, um, I'd say I can see that um, they're similar, but I feel like this one has a, a stronger flavor mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, more forward when it comes to that. Right. Okay, so this is the last slice of the flat here. So I'll give you that. Again, the flat's on the bottom. There's a bit of the point muscle up there. Mm -hmm. So take that. Whoop. And I'll take a bite of this. So which side? This, this side. The bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of the, the same commentary applies, mm -hmm. but this one's still ten more tender yeah. to me than the other one. And again, more juicy. I agree. It is. Uh, do we have consensus? We have consensus. Yeah, I like this one better. And so this one that we just ate is the longer cooked brisket. So this is the one that we spent an extra four hours on the front end, smoking super low and slow. It got a little bit more tender at the end and it really shines through here. So you like this brisket better, right? Yep. Yeah. I'll be taking that one home with me. Okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, very so nice. in terms of like any, any other notes, like it, was there anything, any redeeming qualities of that other brisket that you think like were different than this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is something that's intentional, but I felt like the, the seasoning on the outside yeah. was more prominent. I, I tasted it uh, okay. on the tongue more. Right. Yeah, so the peppery uh, and seasoning yeah. okay. felt stronger to me. Awesome. That's great. And Joe, you just uh, you just launched your own business. Tell us a little bit about Kingfish oh, Archery. Because you know, the... on the Smoke Trails YouTube channel, <laughs> if you come and taste test, you get to plug whatever business that you want. That's the deal. That's good That's to know. Payment. Well, thanks for the plug. Yeah, uh, the business is Kingfisher Archery. We're a grassroots archery lifestyle apparel company. Uh, just got it off the ground, and the idea is to bring vibrancy and visual appeal to the archery community. Nice. Yeah. Do you have a website? or? Yeah, it's kingfisherarchery.com. Nice. Thanks for the plug. I appreciate it. Check yeah. it out. Follow us on Instagram. Kingfisher underscore archery. I'll link it below. Do you do any like hunting stuff or like not is there yet, overlap? Not yet. There will be at some nice. point. Uh, right now, the focus is mostly target archery, 3D archery, yeah. and uh, the things that uh, bring together hunting archers, target archers, 3D archery. Nice. Yeah, I, I do a bit of I do a bit of hunting archery, but I, I've never actually got a deer. I've been out a few times, but it's so tough. maybe I need to I need to go on your site and, and your videos and brush up on my skills a little bit. In time, <laughs> and maybe we'll go hunt together. Yeah, of, of course, that would be a great video. All right, guys, so you saw what Joe thought about those briskets. He really liked the low and slow brisket a lot better than the regular brisket. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I really wanted the results of this experiment to be that 
both of these briskets turned out almost identical because then it means that I don't have to add an extra four hours at the beginning of my brisket cooks and cook a brisket for 15 hours as opposed to 10 to 12 hours. That really stretches my days out. And I really don't want that to be the silver bullet to getting better briskets, but I can't deny what the actual results of this experiment in particular were. And that's that the low and slow brisket with the extra four hours at 200 to 225 degrees Fahrenheit at the beginning of the cook, it turned out better, it turned out juicier, it turned out more tender. But that being said, if I cooked the control brisket maybe another 30 minutes to an hour to get it more tender, would it have been identical to the low and slow brisket? I don't know, so I might have to redo this experiment. I might have to think about it a lot more. I'm not going to change the way that I cook my briskets just yet, but if I continue to get better results with that low and slow extra four hours at the beginning of a cook, I mean, there's not much I can do. I, I have to do it to get a better brisket. So I'll have to do a few more tests, but based on this experiment, does adding an extra four hours of super low and slow cooking at 200 to 225 degrees Fahrenheit at the beginning of your cook give you a better brisket? Yes, based on this experiment, it does. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any ideas for future experiments, let me know in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video, and until then, happy smoking.